I'm going to start with my rod pointed at my target. I'm not going to start with my rod back here. First of all, I can't see my target. Second of all, there's no energy stored in this blank. What we want to do is generate energy on the back cast so that we don't have to generate a lot of energy on the forward stroke of the rod. So we want to store energy within this blank on the back stroke and then release that energy when I point my finger on the four stroke. So we're gonna start with the rod pointed at our target, we're gonna pick a target for practice, we're gonna grab it right here, and it's gonna be all one motion. We're gonna point our finger, okay? Very, very simple, I'll show you again. And somebody's gonna say right away, what'd you do with your other hand, what'd you do with the other hand? I'm gonna show you again, only this time it's gonna be the same motion, same grip, same everything. Line rollers at the top, three fingers in front, gonna grab it here, same amount of line out, here we go. Pick my target, start with my pointed at it, watch this hand. Don't worry about the lure, watch this hand, people. Okay, here we go, ready? I have caught the line with my thumb up against the spool right there, and now I'm going to close this bale manually. Now I have no slack line between me and that lure. This line is laying nice and straight right here, and guess what? I just solved all of your line twist issues. As soon as you, this is open and this happens at the end of your cast, you are going to tangle your line. You're gonna pull that slack out of there and you're gonna wind the bait in, and it's, it's not a good scenario to have that slack line. That is the worst scenario. Slack line is the enemy. All right, here we go again. I'm gonna try to do it in slow motion. Line roller at the top. Lines in the soft spot of my finger, on the tip of my finger. I got three fingers in front. I'm gonna grab back here so I have a nice fulcrum point. I've got my thumb on top. I'm gonna spot my target. I'm gonna do this as slow as I can. Okay, that's the whole shooting match right there with an overhand cast. Okay, so simple. Here is what I don't ever want to see. When I take a guy on a guide trip and he gets in my boat, this is a classic one. He's got a lot of line like this and he's going to go like this and then he's going to loop the line. Can you cast it that way? Absolutely. But did you see how high in the air that lure went? Did you see how completely out of control as far as accuracy and everything I went? That is not a good scenario. What you really want to do is keep your line and your lure speed up by keeping your your trajectory low and do it all in one motion. So I'm facing here, catch my line, close my bail. That's my day one day, day you know, gotta do it all the time cast. That's my longest cast. And, oh, I had one right there. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's say I wanna throw it a really long ways, okay? Well, then I could do the same thing. I could just do it with more effort. Line roller at the top, same thing put a little shoulder to it, now I just doubled the length of my cast, but the stroke was exactly the same, okay? I just doubled the length of the cast by adding more power to the scenario, but the overall stroke is exactly the same. Now, that same stroke is gonna be the same for a sidearm. Well, what scenario would I wanna sidearm a cast? Most commonly, the wind. If the wind is a common thing in the United States or anywhere else you fish for that matter, when, the, when the, the higher the bait gets in the air, the more problems you're gonna have with the wind catching your line and blowing it various directions. But if I sidearm it, now my bait keeps a very low trajectory, just like if you're gonna skip a rock. If you're gonna skip a rock on the surface of the water, you start with a sidearm because you want that flat trajectory. Well, it stands to reason that if I want my lure to have that, then I'm going to work my rod in a horizontal fashion. All right, so how do we do the sidearm cast? The whole scenario goes the same way. The line roller's at the top, same amount of lines out, three fingers in front, gonna catch the line with the soft spot of my finger, open the bale, same scenario all the way around, only now I'm gonna work my rod horizontally so that I can keep my lure real low trajectory. So now, same thing, only my fulcrum is this way instead of this way. That's the only difference, okay? And, and that sidearm cast is really important if you're dealing with wind. It also is really important if you're dealing with, say, overhanging cover. I need to keep a low trajectory to get it under something or over something. In fact, let me grab a different rod here and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's try this one. Now, this rod 
is the same length power action as the other rod. It's got a wacky rig on it, and it's got braided line instead of floor carbon. Otherwise, it's the same basic setup, okay? Same thing, I'm gonna grab it the same way. I'm gonna reel my line up. So now I have the same amount of line. I'm gonna catch this braided line with this soft spot of my finger, same thing. I'm all, this, all the same stuff, okay? Now, I can overhand this one the same, okay? But we don't wanna do that. I can also sidearm this one, and let's try that. Okay, so the sidearm is gonna go like this. So it's the same motion, only now it's this way instead of this way, okay? So the sidearm cast, pick my target, close my veil, no slack line, and oh, that thing got murdered and as soon as it hit the water. That's funny. There's a bunch of little baby smallmouth right here, guys, where we're chosen to camp and do this demo. Okay, so we'll sidearm it over here. You guys can maybe see it a little bit more. A little sidearm, just a little short throw, and then I can catch the line with my thumb and close the bale, and it will sink down right there, and, and I've got control. I can watch the line. I know everything that's going on right here. If I get a bite, I'm ready to deal with it. I do, I'm not letting this thing sink on an open bale. If I do that, I have no idea what's happening with it. It could, it could swim away, fish could grab it. There's no telling. But the sidearm cast is a really important one uh, because, again, that, that slow or that low trajectory. If you look, my line's laid out straight on the water right away, and I have good control, fantastic in the wind. Now, the extreme example of that would be a skip cast. Now I'm going to get my rod tip below my horizontal position. I'm going to slide it straight across the surface of the water, and as the bait plays out, the rod tip will come up. And as it does that, it will allow that bait to slide across the surface of the water so I can throw it under a dock or under some trees or whatever the case might be. So the skip cast, we're going to throw it over here, is going to go something like this. And it skips a long ways. Again, I'm catching the line right here. Okay, That is very, very important. And then closing this bale manually. Watch, we'll do another skip cast. So I'm just doing an open water so you can see it. But the idea is the same. Okay. Same amount of line, line roller at the top. I know it's redundant, guys, but I drill this into people on guide trips and it's sometimes a struggle. Here we go. We're gonna two-hand it. The bait will just skip, no problem, if you slide it and lift up on the rod tip as it goes, okay? Here we go, we'll slide one right down this bank right here. That thing just skipped like 20 feet down the bank, okay? Very, very easy to do that and I end up with my rod tip in a high position because I'm lifting on the rod as the bait plays out, okay? So, skip cast right down the bank, guys. So it's gonna go something like this. Right down the bank it goes, now it's in a good spot, and now I can just watch the line, watch it sink, see if somebody's on there, whatever the case might be. But because I had control of the slack line from the get-go, I don't have tangle issues, I don't have any concerns at all for catching fish with that. So the skip cast is important, or the sidearm cast, or the overarm, overhand cast. So let's step away from all those for a minute and talk about the most important cast, in my opinion of all, and it doesn't matter if it's a spinning rod or a casting rod, this cast catches us more fish probably than all the other casts do. And the reason is it's the most controlled and the most accurate of the casts that I could choose to, to, to use. We talked about the stripper guide in the very beginning. Here's the stripper guide right here. It's the closest one to the reel. Now I'm going to change how much line's out front and I'm going to go to a one-handed cast and you'll see why. I want my lure somewhere between about six inches below and above this guide, somewhere in this range is how much line I want to have out. I'm gonna use this as my gauge right here, okay? So when I reel it up each time, I'm gonna look at it and go, oh, it's not quite where I want it. Okay, so somewhere right around that guide, if you look at it, it's when I point the rod up, it's almost right to that guide right there, okay? So now, watch this. I'm not gonna move my body at all. I'm not gonna move my body. If you look at my lure, it is swinging like mad, and you look at my body, it is not even moving, okay? Now, this is important because when I try to teach this to people, they try to use their body, okay? Watch that lure swing, okay? It's swinging. As long as it's just swinging like that, I am in total control, it's not bouncing. I can just dip the rod and swing it. 
Notice all I did was dip the rod and let it go. And it went out there 35 feet without any problem at all. I've caught my line, I'm in total control. That's the most accurate cast at all. Now, let me give you what it is not because I have so many people I've tried to teach this and they struggle with it. It's not this. We're not doing this with the rod. That's what everybody wants to do. They try to get that thing swinging doing that. It's all about using the, the rod tip up, down, up, down. It's all about where the rod tip is. I'm not moving, my arm's not moving at all and I can swing this lure anywhere I want. I'm not moving my arm. All I'm doing is using a little tiny bit of rod tip and then when I get ready to actually cast it, let's say I just reeled it up, let's just do an actual one. I'll reel it up to about the length I want and just dip the rod and underhand it like that. That's all it takes guys, that little tiny short underhand pitch. That one will catch you the most fish because it gives me the perfect control at close range. If the camera looks down at this piece of grass right in front of me right here, if you look right there, if I need to throw right there with a spinning rod, most of you guys as clients are gonna struggle, but I can do it very easily because I can just pitch it underhand right there, guys. All I'm doing is pitching a little farther down the bank, maybe this taller piece of grass, you go, oh, well, he's right there. So I can just throw it over there, right in the little shady spot, no problem at all. And I've got, look at the lines pinned right here, close my bail. Okay, so important, the little pitch cast. So a little farther down the bank, you see that little stick right there, just dip the rod, throw it up there right on the tip of that stick every time, no problem, guys. That's where you generate control. So I'm gonna throw another one right there by the tip of that little stick, okay? You look at that little stick and you go, oh, well, that's where the fish is. So I'm gonna throw it right off the tip of that little stick, perfect, right? He's sitting on the end of that stick, now I just threw it six inches in front of him and he can eat it, okay? So important. This cast right here, guys, this cast right here, that's the one that will pay the bills for you. That's the cast that will catch you a lot of fish. Let's say you're in a river situation, you know, and I need to throw it a little bit farther, okay? Well, no problem, I can flick it a little harder. That's easy, a 50-foot cast with a little underhand flick. My bait never got any higher than about that above the water. I didn't have a lot of slack in the air for the wind to catch. I close my bail right away and I'm caught. I'm ready to fish. I can close the bail and I can catch them. And I caught one just to prove I could. <laughs> just kidding, come off there. It's not a fish.